are recording. Now, just before we start the show, Crassy, I wanted to just, you know, when, when, when nobody's listening, I wanted to check out, are you modelling yourself purposely on Jamie Sheldon and Todd Hutchins? Because um, you got not, you, that's a pretty slick do you've got there, mate. <laughs> uh, my new hair is because my hair started to disappear and I don't like the way I look without hair here. That's why I decided to <laughs> change it all. Hey! It don't tell anybody. Shh, keep that quiet. We'll we'll keep that to ourselves. But the, you know what they say about guys whose hair falls out? It means you're more virile, more manly. Yeah, I know this. <laughs> Have a, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I know, I know this. So I'm already all over that one. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm going to introduce who we've got on the show here. Very good friend of mine from Bulgaria. And this man, I'm going to big you up here, Crassy. He's arguably the most successful Bulgarian arm wrestler of all time. He's certainly, I'm going to say, the most successful heavyweight from Bulgaria of all time. And arguably the most successful internationally of all time. Because if you look at titles won, Bulgarian national, European, world, Nemirov World Cup, which... uh, a certain individual on the call is the overall champion of the Nemirov Cup, left and right and open, which takes some doing. Is there anybody else in Bulgaria, mate, that's won as much as you? In total, I think you probably... Not so far. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. which, let's be honest, coming from, and we'll get into this as we get uh, more into your story, mate, but coming from a country which is pretty much unarguably a hotbed of arm wrestling excellence, I think it's fair to say, in Bulgaria. That is some accolade to be the most successful arm wrestler from Bulgaria. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Krasimir Kostadinov. And I know that I've had a great deal of messages and people sending me posts saying, Fatty, when are you going to get Krasi on the show, son? We want to hear from Krasi. He's He's a rich vein of form. He's been in the WAL, he's been in the Nemirov World Cup, he's been in the PAL Vendettas, he's been WAF World Champion. We want to hear from this guy. And it, it's really good to get you on, Krasimir, and to sort of get an opportunity to look into your background. I know we've spoken about that uh, previously, but it's nice to give people a, an opportunity to see that in a little bit more detail. So I know you're not familiar with these shows, mate, and how they run. So what we want to do is take things way back and get into your sort of uh, history as a young boy and how your uh, sporting life, your general sporting life, got underway, mate, and your your sort of physical development. Because ever since I've known you, you've looked like you were in peak physical condition. And I wanted to sort of start there, really, mate. When What was your interest in fitness, health and fitness, strength, in Bulgaria as a kid growing up? what were your were your parents fit people were they into training so let's start from here when i was a child i was very active i was uh, playing soccer all day long and when i was seven years old one of my cousins uh, gave me as a present a dumbbell okay uh, two dumbbells three kilos and six kilos mm-hmm. and i was lifting Bites of skulls and uh, shoulders. I was training almost every day, uh, and I was a lot stronger than my classmates from first class until my teenage years. I was a lot stronger than the other guys. Did you have any sort of aspirations at that time, or did you have any influence at that time? It were the people you look because the reason I ask that question is called Bulgaria's got. A real cultural approach to strength sport that we don't see in certainly in the UK, in America. There, there's, you know, wrestlers, uh, weightlifters. You've got some incredible weightlifters, Olympic yes. weightlifters and so on. When I was a child, I was watching weightlifting because uh, back then we were the first nation in the world when Ivana Bajiev was our trainer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was watching on the TV, but I was not so inspired to start weightlifting. Uh, When I was 12 years old, I started to play handball. Okay, okay, yeah. About five years I was playing handball. Uh, And I was pretty good. 
let's say about um, a national level. Mm-hmm. National level at least. Okay, so yeah, very good. Uh, <coughs> even the trainer said to me and to my father that if I want, I can go to Sofia to start training professionally. Wow. But uh, my father said, mm, no, you are too young for the big city. And this was at 12 years old? Uh, maybe 15 when they offered 15. this. Yes. Okay. Um, is, there, is there a lot of money in handball in Bulgaria, mate? Is it a big sport over there? Uh, it's not so big uh, a sport, but uh, the thing is that it's Olympic sport. And sure. if, if I was playing handball, I could go to some other country and compete there. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, my father said no, <laughs> and I just continued to, um, when I was 14 years old, I started to go to the fitness, and I was playing handball mm-hmm. and going to the gym also, and uh, when I was 17 years old, I already had um, uh, about three years in the gym already, and I was physically very strong. My bench press was pretty solid. I was um, 82 kilos, and my bench press was 160. Wow, that's really at 17 years old. Eight, yes, six, yes. That's really solid, mate. Very, very and, strong. And I was thinking in my head, uh, should I try arm wrestling or should I try bench pressing? Yeah, yeah. This was a little bit like conflict in my head mm-hmm. because. Uh, it, Almost every day in school we were pulling at the tables and I knew that I should go to some competitions to try myself. Were you always, as a kid, were you sort of always lean and athletic or were you thick set and, and powerful in terms I of your physicality? Very, I was very lean. I was very lean. O- almost no fat when I was mm-hmm. a child. Um, another thing I want to ask you when you first got into sort of fitness and you were training with the dumbbells and doing shoulders, did you ever get into doing stuff like push-ups or anything like that? Was there a reason you gravitated towards the bench press? What was the the reason you went? Did you just find you were naturally better at that movement than, than others? I don't know. I just uh, liked that movement and I was training yeah. it almost every training. Mm-hmm. And I was put, putting more and more kilos <laughs> yeah. every time. Uh, and when I was 17, I found out from internet that there will be a national championship in Bulgaria. And I said to myself, I'm going there. I went there and got fourth with left and third with right. Wow. And, and just fell in love with the sport. And said so that myself, was at sort of 17 or 18 years old? 17, 17. Okay. And yes, what area of what area you, do you live in, mate? Uh, or did, what, what area were you in, in Bulgaria? Northeast part. So were you training at that time with any, or did you get into, or were you aware of, any high-level arm wrestlers? Because let's say we're in the UK or we're in the United States. The first question that a lot of people get asked is, oh, is arm wrestling even a sport? And I wondered whether at 17 years old, you were aware that arm wrestling was a sport and that you had a familiarity with other arm wrestlers like Svetan, for example. Yes. In in Bulgaria, back then, there was professional arm wrestling league. The eight best competitors from Bulgaria were pulling each uh, against each other. Yeah. And uh, they were showing that tournament uh, very often on the TV. And I was, I was watching that and I was cheering on them. Who were your favorites, mate? Who were the guys that you, because I'll know a lot of these guys, I'm sure. Uh, back, back then, it was uh, Cvetan Gashevsky, my favorite. Oh, he's the king. Of course. Professor, yeah. Oh, awesome. What a puller. Yeah. And even I remember me discussing with, in the school with one other guy. Hey, now there is a new guy, Stoyan Gulemanov. He's beating most of the guys we tried. Huh? Mm-hmm. He's good. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And so I was familiar with arm wrestling. I knew that there are competitions. And mm-hmm. if you want, you can get into, into the sport. And uh, when I went to the nationals and got third with right, I just said to myself that 
one day I will be the best in this sport. And I'm still trying to reach that number one sport, the sport in the world. But but let's be honest, mate. I think it's fair to say that you have been there or for your weight I, class. You know what I mean? I, I know what you will say. You're a short, short guy. You cannot beat the heavyweights. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, hey, <laughs> we, we've been there. But listen. On the, <laughs> hey, but the thing is, number one, I'm right. And number two, when when you pulled with uh, Liliev in Brazil, at that time, that was right there. I mean, right there. If you stop the clock... And I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, and we'll come back. But at that time, Liliev was pretty much the man. He was he was definitely in the conversation for being potentially the man. Yes. And and you beat him. So in your mind, I know that you can't line up all the very very best guys in the world on any given day. But if you could in, encapsulate your level and performance on that day, you must have thought in your mind going home that certainly at that weight class, at sort of the 90 to 110 category, there was nobody really that must have been head and shoulders above you anywhere. And I'm including everyone in that conversation. You, that result was mega. I, I, I lost my voice in, in that match shouting at the side of the stage. That was awesome. It was just like a drama, you know? And this is still my biggest uh, win in my eyes, in my mind. It was ace. Yeah. It was absolute quad. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that, mate. We'll get to that. But when you went to the national championships at 17 years old, right, in Bulgaria, where the level the residual level is high. And there are a lot of guys that arm wrestle. I've been on holiday in Bulgaria, and you'll be in a bar messing around, and some dude will come up, and you get recognised in Bulgaria as well. People actually come up to you and say, oh, Neil Pickle, arm wrestle, and you, you're off. And then you start messing around in a bar or something, and three other guys come, and they can pull. They may be not, you know, mega level, but they can arm wrestle, and they know how to arm wrestle. So... The sport, it's, it's almost like Turkey's the same. It's a cool place because so many people are aware of arm wrestling. And that's one of the things I wanted to get out when we did this with yourself, Crassy. But at the time when you first went to the Nationals, had you had any formal training or exposure to technique in the sport? No, I, I, I knew nothing about the sport. And uh, even my match with uh, Gurgit Svetkov with right arm, he took my wrist, we slipped, and in the straps, he took my wrist again, and I started to go just to the side, and I beat him with dead wrist, and one Jesus of the referees Christ. said, what the fuck are you doing, boy? Do you know how, do you know, do you know how to fool? And I said, no, I'm the first time here, so how, how should I know? <laughs> <laughs> but my god, that is, were you sort of the the talk of the tournament? Were people coming over to you like immediately going, "Mate, uh, <laughs> you're not normal." There were there were two three guys who came to me and said that, uh, "Hey man, you have a p- potential." <clears throat> My God, that's the understatement of the year. That's like like saying I've got potential as a pie eating champion. That's some pretty bloody good. That's some red hot potential right there, mate. Wow. So, was you, you said that that that, that was it? The bug fit you straight away. What was the next step, Crassy? Where did you go from there? Did you get into a club? So, two, two weeks after that, uh, uh, that was the European Championship 2005 in Sofia. Mm-hmm. So, I was uh, in school, but I wanted so bad to go there and watch that I go to the doctor and said to him, give me some receipt so I can go and watch the Europeans. And he gave me the receipt, and I went to Sofia just to watch you, the Europeans. You told the doctor to give you... I <laughs> can the doctor, son. So the doctor was like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I, know it, I know it's incredibly corrupt, young man, but... No, no. Did you have to pay the dude, or did he, did he, did he, was he a family friend? There's got to be some reason why he said, yeah, it's okay. Uh, I, I don't know, but in Bulgaria it's possible to do this. <laughs> Oh, mate, I love it. 
absolute class. So you found the dodgy doctor who <laughs> who signed you out of school, and you went to watch the Europeans. Yes. Awesome. And I was watching with so big interest the championship, mm-hmm. and uh, I was um, uh, watching about my category, juniors heavyweights, and uh, the guys who were uh, dropping off the tournament, I was behind this uh, behind the scene. Sure. And I said to them, come on, let's try what's happening here. Mm-hmm. And um, even then, I was able to beat uh, two or three of them. Uh, and then, this was with, a, with, a, with no technique, completely sideways, two weeks after your first ever competition, you were able to beat some of the guys yes. at the European Championships. Yes, yes. Mega. Wow. Yeah, that's really, really, that's really, really solid. And that's at 17 years of age. And then the juniors, they were going up to, was they, yeah, to 18. So you, you had another year and your body weight then would have been what, about 85 kilos maybe? Uh, 82, I think. 82 I kilos. So you weren't much bigger than when you were benching. Fair enough. Wow. Very, very, very strong. So that must have given you incredible confidence. Just the one second. No problem. That's three women have now arrived at Crassie's house. Little ladies, man. Just letting them in so they can keep themselves warm. And then he'll be back to them in a little while. He'll be like, ladies, just pour yourself a Prosecco. I'll finish the interview with uh, my fat friend and I will be right with you. Okay, Crassie, here we go. Crack on, son. The women are undressing. It's unsettled, Crassie, a little. I I will fix (laughs) I will fix their uh, something after that, so. <laughs> no worries, mate. I didn't mean to spoil your flow. So, it must have given you big confidence after the European Championships. Yes, I, I understood that uh, I really have a potential and I just need to continue developing. And at that point in arm wrestling, was there money to be earned? Could you? Because you, you hear the myth and legend in... Uh, the guys in the States, the guys in Canada, in the UK will always hear, oh, yeah, in other countries you can earn money doing this. Was Bulgaria one of those countries? Was there an opportunity to earn money? Yes, yes. If you were good enough, you could earn money from that. Mm-hmm. Was it good money? Solid? <clears throat> Let's say like this. I I live in a very small town. And if you are the best in the world, as I was for many years... I could live with with this money. Tremendous. If if you live in the capital, more difficult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So after the European Championships, surely at that point in time, Bulgaria being as orchestrated as it is, or regulated as it is, somebody must have got hold of you and been like, "We got to get this guy in the team." I met several guys from Sofia, and uh, I took their telephone numbers and we arranged some trainings during the next year Mm -hmm. I I was going there every month to train and to ask them what to train now, how should I proceed forward and they teach me how to pull and what to train I was training with them once a month so yeah, so not a lot not often did you have any pain when you first started? Because it sounds like you were pulling at a of high course. level, real sideways. Of course, I had pain. <laughs> of course. Um, most of the people, when they're beginning, have a lot of pain because mm. the hands and the wrists are not strong enough. And they, when you go sideways, all the pressure goes in the joints Absolutely. and here also. Mm-hmm. After that, when your fingers and wrist get stronger, the the most of the pressure go in the muscles, not so much in the joints, and the pain is less. Mm-hmm. And when you first started, Krasi, was it was it the press that you were were gravitating towards? Really, you were I know you're not ideally with the broken back wrist, Jerry Cadaret style. You were more of a closed wrist, tight shoulder. Yes, yes. But the first mm-hmm. two, the first two years of my career. I was just yeah. I was I was curling the wrist and with the shoulder 
in triceps going forward? I think the first time I ever pulled you a little bit, I'd beaten Stoyan Golomanov that day. In the, and I think that was it was either the Worlds or the Europeans. And I, I put him out that day. And Svetan, which, which I can't, you know what, mate? I can't remember. I honestly can't remember. But I beat Stoyan, and Svetan was at the side of the table instructing Stoyan. And after the competition, he, cut, he said, oh, Neil, I want you to pull with Stoyan again. And we pulled again. And I won again, but to be fair, I think Stoyan had pulled a couple of times also on the practice table before we met. Um, And then I pulled with Svetan a little bit, and you came up at the side of the table. And I sort of thought, oh, he's young, new kid, and I let you go. And you went, just real quick, and sat there. And I remember trying to roll out and went, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) I remember. I I I don't remember remember this. You were only probably 85 kilos, but I remember you, you just really fast movement, but you didn't try to pin me. You just and sat really solid. And I sort of stopped and I thought, oh, this guy feels like he's got something. And then I just went and I thought, oh, you feel really, and Engin was at this side of me. And as I came off, I went, oh, he's really strong. And he went, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think you'd been dusting a few guys at the practice table. We were all just mucking around afterward, you know. And that was the first time I ever saw you. And I always remember the, the tattoo. That was what made me think, ah, oh, yeah. And then you sort of see guys as time goes forward. You see people at events. And I started to watch you and you were progressing, you know. But I don't know how old you were. I can't even remember what year that was. But uh, I don't know. I, I remember the first words from you to me were at the Worlds in Manchester. I was, uh, I don't know, I was pulling and you came nearby me and you just said, Animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That was the first thing from you. <laughs> yeah. What I heard. I remember watching you at a few tournaments. I want to say, I can't remember where. Maybe it was Poland or the Czech Republic. I can't remember one of those events. But I remember speaking to Svetan. You just won, you were doing really well in the competition. And I said to Svetan, I said, oh, this, this new kid of yours is an animal. He's an absolute beast. And he said, oh, yeah, he's ridiculously strong in a hook. And I said, how do you, how do you do with him? Has he got something for you? And Svetan went, yeah, like, yeah, he's really, really frigging strong. <clears throat> and that was the first time when I, you make the mental notes because you were pulling in that day. I think you were 85 kilos and I had aspirations. I was pulling in 80s and I had aspirations to move up. And so you're trying to track the guys that you may encounter, maybe in your class. So I'm like, you know, you're making the mental notes. And that was another time when I when I, I made mental notes on, on you and watched, started to watch you then and interested in your career. And after a couple of times then, you know, obviously spoke to you. I can't remember where the hell we were going when we were on the plane. And I sat ne- I was sat next to you on the plane. And we we're talking for a long time. It was maybe going to the U.S. or something. It was a long plane maybe, journey. Maybe to Canada. Could have been Canada. Yeah. Where you told me the story about the Bulgarian, <laughs> the Bulgarian premier when he spoke to a guy. I can't even, and I remember uh, somebody asked him, what's your best bench? And this guy gave him a number. And then the, the Bulgarian premier, he said to the Bulgarian president, what's your best bench? And he told him his best bench. You, you remember that story? Oh, because almost, he said, almost. I can't remember who it was he was speaking to, but the the Bulgarian, you said, oh, this guy used to be a wrestler, like a high-level wrestler or weightlifter or something. And he, he asked this guy, famous strength athlete, he said, what's your best bench? And this guy gave him a number, and the, the and he said, that's my best, but not now. Ah, yes. you remember? Yes, 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 yes. yes. And, uh, and after that, he, he replied, mine is 100, but now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, one son, yes. When you told me that, we we're laughing our ass. Oh, it was yes, good. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but now, <laughs> I, I I absolutely love that story, mate. That's yeah. been all over the UK. That one. <laughs> yes, yes. One of the guys said, "My bench max is 150, but not now." And the other <laughs> replied, "Mine is 100, but now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great story, mate. I absolutely love that. I can't remember who the hell it was. He was t- it was one of the famous guys. This guy came up in conversation, and you just said, "Oh yeah, 
our president sat had a conversation with him about and we just got onto it. But anyway, we're getting we're getting off track, mate. We're getting off track, digressing. But so when you first started to train after the Europeans that year, who where did you go to? What was your first club or first uh who were the guys that would, would took you under their wing? Was it Svetan? Was it Stoyan? No, it was Nikolai Ivanov from Sofia. Okay. Stefan Stefanov and Netko Petkov. These were the guys that I was traveling to every month. Yeah. They teach me how to, to pull. And one guy from near, one guy, one uh, town that is near to my town. Mm-hmm. Not, his name is Valery Enchev. And in your, uh, t- Dimitrov, Dimitrov. and in your town that you live in now, how many arm wrestlers are there? Have you, because you often find if a very good arm wrestler, a high level arm wrestler is in one area, then others will gravitate around him. You'll find that that's the case. Has that happened where you are through your career, mate? Have others come so, to you? From my town, there were zero arm wrestlers before me. There was Jesus. nobody competing here. And after I started, so right now, it's me, Sasha Andreev, Bojidar Simeonov, Dimitrina Petrova, Elbin Ferrat. And people will know Dimitrina. Uh, from the World Arm Wrestling League. She went in there, took, I think yes. she was the first person to get a pin on Fioresic. Hey, yes. So we are five world champions from my town right now. Yeah, which is like not bad. That's yes. a, and that's a the, reasonable. The town, the town is about seven, eight thousand people. Jesus. I mean, that's, I mean, Sasho. Well, there's another absolute monster. I mean, and a great training partner, surely. For you. Do you do you guys train together? Uh, not so much, actually. Our communication is not that good, and very Rival- rare. Rivalry. Yes, yes. Of course, I get that. I get because he's rock strong. I mean, yes. Sasha is very, very. Str- are there? Are you two the sort of standout powerhouses in that area? Or have you anyone that can give you competition? Right now, Sasha and Bojidar, Bojidar Simeonov. What? Bojidar? Jesus. Yeah, Bojidar's another friggin' beast. And actually, right now, Bojidar is in great shape, and uh, it happens, th- actually, the last training that we had, all three of us, Bojidar was more uncomfortable for me than Sasha. I yeah, I, I can understand that, though. Stylistically, it make, that makes yes, sense. Yes, yes. And... Mm. Uh, I had more troubles against uh, Bujdar, not so much with Sasha, and Sasha was beating Bujdar very easy, so yes. it was something mixed. Yeah. But all, all three of us, and also Jordan Tsonev from Silistra. Who's another, I mean, I'm a massive fan. Yes. I, Jordan's mega. I love him. Yes, he, two years ago, he he was living here in my house together we were living about one year mm-hmm. and we were just eating sleeping and training all the time oh, jesus no that's probably why his level went through the roof at that time as well yes. but the interesting thing is that my level didn't go up that year because he's uh, younger than me mm-hmm. and his recovery is much faster than mine and when i try to pull with him almost every training and I get uh, too much uh, sore, soreness from yeah. the training. And um, I realized that training with somebody equal to you is not good if it's too much. Sure, I get that 100%. I had, a, I had similar experiences sometimes when I overcook things early in my career and would try to seek out stronger training partners, bigger men, that sometimes you could beat, but they, they were stretching you out of your elastic limits. And it's easy to take steps backwards because you're constantly damaging things, you know, key things. And then you think, oh, okay, it, I'll pull in a different position. So you do. And then you damage something else. And it, it's cumulative, uh, particularly as you, you've been in the sport a long time. And it's fair to say that I probably pulled cleaner than you do in terms of you, you use a lot of material in the way that you pull. Very inside, always have been. Um, and I, I would imagine that your joints have taken. And How old are you now, mate? 32. Jesus, 32. That's incredible because it seems like you've been there forever. It, just, <laughs> it does. 
You're still only a puppy, and it seems like you've been there forever. 15 years I'm in the sport. God damn, it feels, it feels like longer, mate. <laughs> yeah. It feels like longer. It really does. I mean, so many, I've watched you at so many places over so many years. Wow. The thing is that I've been competing constantly <laughs> at all the competitions. European, yes. Worlds, Nimirov, all the time, every year. A, A1 also, Croatia, Italy, Senet's Hand, almost yes. everywhere. Very well traveled guy. Um, and obviously, when you started the sport and you started to train with a club, how quickly did your ascension in that club begin? Did you soon, I know you said you were training with them once a month yes. and they were giving you as much as they can give you when you're training once a month. But were you soon surpassing everyone in that club? Every month <clears throat> I was seeing something um, I was developing. My month by month I was developing. Um, back then, Nikolai Ivanov was beating me in hook. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was I was struggling with him every time a little bit more, a little bit five seconds more in the hook, yes. five seconds more in the hook. And I was with the other guys. I started to beat them. And um, do you think that was a strength thing? Crassy at the time, or do you think it was a combination of the fact that you were still trying to find your technical positions and your prowess technically? Uh, I think it was uh, it was the strength because I can say that I'm one of the guys who feels what to do on the table and okay. about the technique. I understood what I should do immediately from the yep. first training. I just understood how I should stay on the table and. There was not much to, to do with my technique the next months. Yeah. I was just gaining strength where I needed, mostly my wrist and fingers. And did your training, <clears throat> your supplementary training, change a great deal when you started, after you'd been introduced to the professional arm wrestlers, did they make big changes to what you were doing mm, from a strength program? Changes. No. About the supplements, I was thinking the same, the same stuff as when I was in the gym. Creatine, glutamine, BCA, Oh, sorry, mate. I mean the, the, the type of training that you did. So, uh, supplementary training. So, ah, suppl- ah, okay, weight okay, okay. training. Yeah, yes. so your, your, your bench press, did you yes, continue yes. to bench? Actually, did you continue well, to... <clears throat> yes, sorry. Uh, when I started um, uh, with arm wrestling, mm-hmm. I stopped all the fitness movements. I just foc- I focused on the arm wrestling movements. Okay. Just five, six exercises. That's it. And what were those exercises, mate? I'm sure the people at home would be really interested. Back then, uh, I went to my uncle, and he built a machine for me, which is you catch the machine and you just go to push it. Mm -hmm. It was side pressure training. Yeah. Uh, Biceps, I was doing like this. Like this. Yeah. Uh, Wrist. With with bar, mm-hmm. uh, what else was? Did you train your wrists two hands or single hand? Back then I don't remember, but I was training maybe both exercises. Yeah, with bar and also with uh, one hand. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. So quite and basic movements. A lot of you hear this from a lot of top arm wrestlers. You know, I was talking to Rob Vigent the other week and. A number of the top guys always tell you the same thing, that there are certain relatively basic exercises that have massive benefit in the sport. They really yield enormous benefit. Yes, I, I think that to be good on the table, you just need two, three exercises, not, not more. If you're strong enough. So what's important in arm wrestling? Side pressure, wrist strength and back pressure. Mm-hmm. So these are three exercises. You, you, if you are strong enough in three exercises, you can be strong on the table. Sure. Very, very interesting. And a, and a nice, open, simplistic take on that, mate. So, how long was it before you started to really see that you were different from the crowd in Bulgaria? Did, how long before you, for example, got to the top of the club in terms of your level? One year after I, sta- I started. 
uh, at the national championship. <coughs> I beat everyone in the junior class. Mm-hmm. With with right, with left, I was third, I think. My left was not that good my first years in arm wrestling. But with right, I got... Uh, I don't know. The, I took a medal in, in men class also with right. But not sure what kind of medal. Anyway, uh, after that, I went to the Europeans and got... Third with left and second with right mm-hmm. at the European Championship. Junior. And was that was in the juniors, yeah. Yes. And uh, with the medals from the Europeans, our president said to me, "If you want, I can let you try yourself in the professional arm wrestling league." And I said, "Of course, I want." And immediately with my first appearance there. I beat uh, Wojciechowski Savchev, who was the favorite. Yeah, and a hundred and ten kilo, a hundred kilo. Yes, yes. Yeah, he, yeah. Was the, he was the favorite that year. He was beating most of the guys, and I beat him the first time we pulled, mm-hmm. and everybody was so impressed back then. Uh, with left, they were beating me. My left was not that good. With right, I was maybe fourth on that competition, but. Uh, it meant a lot. Yeah, I bet it did. Phenomenal. And after one more year, 2007, I became uh, absolute champion of Bulgaria. <laughs> one, so you'd basically been in the game for under three years, and three you were the in, in two years, two years, years you were the old. overall champion of Bulgaria. Yes. Yes. Bloody hell, Crassy. <laughs> That's mega. Because I know at that time you had some absolute units over there, some real friggin' monsters. Yes, Gulemanov was my biggest opponent back then. But Stoyan's a tremendous... I mean, <clears throat> for those people, for the newcomers to the sport who do not know Stoyan Gulemanov, he is one of the best top rollers probably of all time. He's a phenomenal top roller. Absolute, and one of the things also I'm going to say about Stoyan is Stoyan is underrated as an all-rounder. People, you know, they think, oh, Stoyan, yeah, he's good at top roll, he's quick, he's got great technique, but he's not so strong. He was really, really, really strong. <laughs> you know, he could pull very, very well in a lot of positions, and he was also extremely intelligent, very clever. Yes. Been pulling, um, obviously, I think he was trained by, uh, by Svetan, wasn't he? Of course, he is. Yeah. And and so that should tell you everything you need to know. He was trained by a guy that I personally consider to be as good as any armor that's ever drawn breath. I mean, if you if you're not familiar with the professor with Svetan Gashevsky, guys, get out there and and try and do homework on that man because let me tell you now, all shall bow. That mother fluffer should live on the top of a mountain and people should go and queue up to meet him. He's like Father Christmas, but better at arm wrestling. Unbelievable puller. Really was. His knowledge about arm wrestling is really huge. Yeah, he's mega. He's a, and he's such an approachable guy. Uh, very open. Um, very friendly. Very mild-mannered and humble. But an absolutely magnificent technician. And that's the man that trained Gulamanov, so that should give you an indication of... And at that time, Svetan was still active as well. So he was arm wrestling in 2007. I think he had some damage around that time, but he yes, was certainly... He was, he was not uh, that guy who he used to be. No. He was still pulling. Yes. But it's... Uh, I know you've got massive respect for Svetan, as he has for you, but to be fair, mate, you can't underplay that, that accolade. To be the overall champion of Bulgaria, after two years arm wrestling, you massive weirdo. <laughs> And here we are today. Oh dear, oh dear, mate. That's absolute quality. You know, on these shows, we get a lot of guys and they say, yeah, I wasn't the guy that... I mean, I did Engin, right? And Engin came on here and he said, when I was young, I was unbelievably weak. I worked in a florist shop. You're like the Antichrist of Engin. <laughs> you, came, you came on here and immediately went to the Nationals in Bulgaria and finished third. 
And two years after that, you were the overall champion of the country. That's a pretty yeah. good thing. You're like yeah. Richard Lucas. So, first major titles. Let's get on to your major titles. Uh, obviously, you're, you're the overall champion of Bulgaria, that they must have put you on a, a bit of a pedestal at that point. So, when you went to the European Championships and, and World Championships, were you extremely confident? Or were you overall nervous? 2007, at the Worlds in Bulgaria, in Veliko Trnovo, nobody from the world knew about me. And before to go out on the stage, I, I stepped next to Ruslan Babayev, and I said to him, Ruslan, are you ready? And he looked at me, very surprised, he didn't know me, and he said, good luck. And two minutes after that, I beat him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and a lot of people know Rustam, but they won't know Ruslan. And at that time, Ruslan was a rock, very, very yes, strong. Yes. And also, pretty much, for, he, he for, looked to pull where you... For two, three years, for two, three years, I think with right arm, Ruslan was better. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I so agree. 2006 until 2008, maybe. This one was better with right. And a, a not dissimilar style of pulling. A little bit more defensive, a little bit more of a catching style, than you, that not as attacking. But he liked to pull very deep. He liked to pull very yeah. tight. Um, reminded me a great deal of Gennady Fadzinov in that sort of style where he sort of took underneath. And then, you know, he'd just start to wear his way, way back into matches. But a really solid puller. I don't actually know what happened to him, Ruslan. I really don't. I haven't seen him for years. Uh, actually, I heard that he's been in the church. He was monk. Really? Yes. But uh, right now, last year, 2020, uh, he was competing at the, some Ukrainian championship. Okay. He was pretty good again. Mm -hmm. So, any chance, have you heard that he's coming back to the sport at all? Or? I think so, I think so. That will be interesting. Is he still a similar size or bigger? Almost the same guy. Mm -hmm. The same face. Almost yeah, the same. real baby face, smiling yes, all the time. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Absolutely. Oh, tremendous, that's good news. If you do see him or hear from him, pass on my best. Good dude, without a doubt. So, did you win that year in Velika Turner? Uh No, I beat him. And after that, at the semi-final elimination, I got hook war with uh, Andrei Kurglov from Russia. Oh, yeah. We had very oh, long God. and fight, uh, very long uh, fight, mm. and he beat me with two fouls. And the thing is that um, that match, <clears throat> I was winning the match, and I felt that I'm winning, and I wanted to finish quicker. And I yeah. lift my elbow and lost. He went to the final undefeated. And I had to pull again Ruslan. But I was already totally exhausted. Mm -hmm. And Ruslan beat me and I was third. And after that, Ruslan won the category, beating two times Krugov in the final. And was that the men's 90? Men's 85. 85, yeah. Wow. I gotta get my memory checked. If Michael Todd had been on here or Engin, Engin would have told you what time that happened in the <laughs> afternoon. You know, precisely twenty five past four in the afternoon. And that, yes, and Gil would tell me and Gil would tell me even what I ate that day for breakfast. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he would. He's amazing, isn't he? He's making notes. He's like a train spotter but strong as fuck. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Now, you, let's go off track a bit again, because I like it when we do that. You and Engin have got quite a good relationship. I mean, I see you online with Engin and you're talking, because Engin gets on his technical rants. I love him. He gets, he gets on his technical rants, and his most recent one has been around the King's move, and he's been, you've like, he's been his confidant, haven't you? You've been, <laughs> he's been writing stuff to you. <clears throat> you know, about the King's move, uh, I think that, uh, this thing should be not a joke. Because I don't like this movement, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, every time you open, you open uh, your opponent's arm until the bone limit, it should be a win for you. Yeah, this is, this is what I believe. Because as Mindaugas Terasitis said, 
three, four days ago, you know, one video. The idea of arm wrestling is to stay close and to open your opponent's arm. Okay. This is the main idea behind arm wrestling. And if your opponent starts like this, Mm -hmm. it's no more arm wrestling. That's an interesting, interesting perspective, though, because if you look back over the history of the sport, there have been some guys that pulled naturally with a very open style, and it's almost like a progression. I mean, guys like Andreas Rundström, who at one point, a lot of Sweden followed that style of arm wrestling, and they would come up to the table, and their starting point was here, and then just, you know, but it was super effective. You know, he was, re- I know he wasn't Kings moving, he was an outright top roller, but that open style of top rolling, that's, that's a, so for Mindaugas, who's a top roller by trade, although he does stay tight, Quite interesting. I've got some. I've got something for you. Okay. What about if I tee up an in the presence of greatness episode? Okay. And I get you. I invite you on there. Obviously, Engin will be on there. And I try and get Mike Todd and Devon on the same call, and we can we can get to the, <laughs> we can nail this mother fluffer once and for all. We think. Would you be up for that? Okay, we can we can do it. It it may it may be hot. <laughs> 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 Are you kidding? With Eng in there? Oh my god. Yeah, I think it would, mate. I think it how much experience have you personally had pulling Kings movies, Crassy? Have you pulled them a lot? Not not a lot. Only on trainings. Yeah. But uh, I I just uh, find it unfair. Okay. I just find it unfair. Are there any high level uh, Kings movers in Bulgaria? Have you got anybody out there that pulls the style? Just Hristo Delijakov. Of course. Of course, Hristo, yeah. He's got a pretty solid... And it's done well for him for years. He has one world title and it's because of the King's move. Mm -hmm. And that's why, in my mind, I don't count. (laughs) (laughs) That's quite harsh, isn't it? It's like, Hristo, no, you can cough. It's not even real. (laughs) Hristo will be out there watching this going, you bastards. (laughs) No, this is the truth. In my mind, I don't count such a wins. Is Tristos uh, a bone lock? Has he got the calcification in the elbow? or His uh, king's move is with almost straight arm. <laughs> so... Because some guys, if you speak to sort of Michael, Michael will say, OK, I, <clears throat> I've got some calcification there, but if my arm goes straight, I have intense pain at the back of the arm. And, and so yeah. I, can't, I can't do that. Now... This is where it gets complicated, because not all King's movers are the same. I get a bit frustrated when people say that it is a move. It's not. It's a system of arm wrestling. Because other King's movers, for example, Gregory Schneider from France, who I've got extensive experience arm wrestling, that King's move, let me tell you now. Now, he will tell you quite openly that when his arm completely fails, his bicep completely fails, it will go out and then it won't straighten any further. And he can wait till the other guy's exhausted and then re-engage his bicep like he's resting because he doesn't feel any pain and he can just hang there, you know. This is this is what I believe Michael Todd is doing also. Mm. So it's an it's an interesting one. It's an engaging one, and and I think probably people's da- the damage that people have in their arm. I'd love to speak to do, Pascal. Do you, do you know why I think like this? Okay. Because the match he had with Andrei Pushkar. Two years ago, mm-hmm. Andre was almost pinning him, and Michael was sitting here and was talking to the referee. Exactly when Pushkar almost pinned him, Michael was sitting yeah. here and talking to the referee. The only counterpoint in there for me would be that that happened at a time in the match when both men were heavily fatigued. Andre was heavily no. fatigued. No. And he was in an exactly, awful... Exactly on that time, Pushkar was pushing with all he had and almost pinned Michael, but Michael was just talking to the referee. I don't believe that he he was flexing his bicep at that time. But you believe that in that match it was completely straight, his arm was on a bone lock? He's like this every time. Hmm. Interesting. We need to do this in the presence, mate. That's got to happen. It's got to happen. It would be, it would be something. A lot of people would, uh, 
I'd like to hear your perspectives on it because I know that you haven't been on any of the shows yet and talked about that openly. But I see that you are clearly very passionate about the subject, and of you speak. To you. For me, I like to win fair. Most mm-hmm. of the guys don't care how they win, fair or not. They just want to get the win. I like to win fair, and when people who win unfair, I'm not happy to watch that and. Especially when it gets more and more popular, I think it's not good for the sport. Do you are you concerned about the popularity of the Kings increasing a great deal though? Because one of the things that always interests me around it is, even though the Kings move has been around since the sort of mid nineties that I know of, there are very very few people who've got the capability and the physical attributes required to perform that function and that technique with any kind of real venom you know there's not too many of them you can probably listen, count listen. i don't care i don't care how many people are doing this i just yeah. want this to be a loose you want it when to be so- when, when somebody uh, stretch your arm you should lose the match that's it Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be a hell of a... <laughs> <laughs> okay, mate. We are at, Crassy, 51 minutes of this first episode, and I know that you've got to head off and do some training. You need to train a lot when you're the overall champion of the Never Off World Cup left and right, have you mentioned? So, what, what, who's over tonight, mate? Are you training on your own, or have you got a few guys over training with you? I have a few guys to train with. No problem. And... Um, how bad is coronavirus over there at the moment? Is there any arm wrestling in Bulgaria now or not not possible? Not arm wrestling for the moment. Mm. Is is the rate quite high over there? I don't know actually. I don't believe so much in the statistic they show. I yeah. don't know what to say. Fair enough, mate. Well, what I will say, ladies and gents, if you have enjoyed this first episode with Krasimir Kostadino then please let us know about it. Put your comments in the comments below and Crassy can check those out. Also, message Crassy, message me directly. Let us know what you'd like to talk to this guy about because we'll be doing plenty more shows with Crassy Mir. Um We've got a lot of career to get through. He's, he's packed quite a lot into that 15-year career. Um, some of the most amazing matches right up to the present. I mean, this is a guy that at the start of 2019 was pulling Big Alex, Gretzscher, in... Possibly the most entertaining match of that year. So, very live, very current. The most recent massive tournament win was all about this man. And we're going to sort of chronologically work our way through this guy's career uh, and stop at points there. But please, send us your suggestions. Send us information about what you'd like to hear from Crassy. And when we get back on here, we will uh, do our best to sort of address all of those. Ladies and gents, I want to say massive thanks to Crassy for checking in. Uh, he's gonna go, he tells me he's training, that's total bullshit, he's got about nine birds over there, and he's gonna probably go off and do that, but in the interim, until we see you next time here on Supernatural Strength. What grabs your eyes on that, if anything?